the new Pi Pico has two cores. How can we use them? And if you want to play with the Pico, this video can save you a lot of time because we will discover the main differences between programming an Arduino and a Pi Pico. After this video, you will know more than 99% of all Pi Pico users and you know how to avoid some quirks. Gritty YouTubers, here is the guy with the Swiss accent with a new episode and fresh ideas around sensors and microcontrollers. Remember, if you subscribe, you will always sit in the first row. In this video, we will gain processing power by distributing the load to two cores. Use one core to supervise a sensor at full speed and use the second core to act accordingly. Synchronize two tasks running on two cores using a barefoot and a professional method. Just because we can. We also learn how to use interrupts on the Pico and measure how fast they are compared with our other boards. With this knowledge you should be able to create all sorts of cool projects using the Pico. And as a benefit, this knowledge can be used for the ESP32, which also has two cores. I assume you already know how to use Python on the Pi Pico. Otherwise, watch my video number 370 or any other introductory video. I assume that you know that Python uses indents and not curly braces to create program structures. If you use the tab key in Tony to create indents, you will get it right. To show our program's effects, I connect three LEDs, a button and a buzzer with the Pico's respective pins. As with Arduino, we have to start with declaring or importing the needed libraries. Machine, because we want to use pins. UTime, because we want to add delays to our programs and Thread is needed when we want to use both cores. Next comes the setup section. As with Arduino, we define the different pins. An interesting thing. Here we use pull down for the button. In Arduino IDE, we usually use pull up because not all of our MCUs offer pull down. Pull down is easier to understand because we get a one or true if we press the button. But keep in mind, we have to connect the second pin of the button to 3.3 volts and not to ground. In Python, we can use variables without declaring. Some people like it, others not. But pay attention, the scope of variables is very different than in the Arduino IDE. When we define a variable in C++, it automatically can be used and changed in its block. Python only has global and local variables. If we define a variable outside functions, it is global and can only be used inside functions. If we try to change a global variable inside a function, Python creates a new local variable with the same name, which can be very frustrating. If we want to change its value, we must declare it as global inside the function. Later, we need this knowledge in our examples. Let's continue. Next comes what we call the loop in the Arduino IDE. In Python, it is a simple while true statement. We switch the LED on, delay, switch it off and delay again. No difference to Arduino. In MicroPython, we do not need to upload the program we just started. The green LED flashes as expected. So we translated our first Arduino program from C++ to Python. Not very hard, but of course it only runs on one core of the Pico. Now we want to use the second core. How do we do that? We define a second loop for the red LED. Fortunately, the thread library is already available in MicroPython. By the way, this is a significant difference from CircuitPython. It currently does not support multi-threading. If we run the program, only the green LED blinks. Not what we expected. Only if we start the thread, both LEDs blink. The second thread automatically runs on the second core. Cool! 
That's all we need to run two threads on two different cores. Suppose we would try to create a third thread, it crashes. So if you need more threads, you have to wait for my video about Artos. Running two independent threads on two cores is okay if we need raw power. But usually we want that one task can influence the other task. To show you this scenario, I use an example taken from the Pi Foundation's fantastic cookbook. I leave a link to where you can download it in the description. The main thread simulates a standard traffic light for cars. The second thread checks if the button for pedestrian crossing is pressed. If so, an acoustic signal is created when the next red phase starts to signal also blind people that they can cross the road. The example uses a barefoot synchronization technique using a global variable. The pedestrian thread sets button pressed to true and the main thread acts upon it. Theoretically, this could create problems, but I assume Damien George, the creator of MicroPython, has taken care that changing a global variable cannot be interrupted by a second thread. Anyway, the example works fine. If we press the button, the buzzer waits till the traffic light becomes red and starts to buzz. As expected. An excellent example of using the second core to create a fast reaction to the button press. But also a waste of processor capacity, of course. As usual on this channel, we want more. We want to see the professional way to synchronize threads. Our professional example is simple. We go back to our example with two LEDs. We want now that the second LED waits till the first finished its cycle. We do this by creating a lock called baton. Baton because of the relay race, where a baton is passed from one runner to another. The same here. Each LED thread has to acquire the baton before it can run. If the baton is with the other runner or thread, it has to wait. As soon as it acquired the baton, it runs or blinks in our case, and after that releases the baton. The next runner can take it and run. Simple but efficient. The effect is visible. The green and the red LED blink one after the other. Cool. Now you know how to use both cores and how to synchronize threads. You already know more than 95% of all PICO users. If we want to rise to the 99% level, we have to learn how to use interrupts. With interrupts, a signal anytime can stop a running task for a moment and do its thing. In our traffic light scenario, we dedicated a whole core to monitor one pin. As said before, probably a slight overkill. The interrupt routine runs on the same core as the main program and leaves the second one for another job. Interrupt functions, by the way, have to be as short as possible. Never include a print statement, for example. We will create a frequency counter using an interrupt. The main loop calculates the frequency from time and sends it to the console. The counter function has two steps. It measures the elapsed time from the last call and stores the current time to be used for the next call. To be fast, all times are measured in microseconds. Now we need something to check our input pin and to call the counter function as soon as it changes. This statement does the trick. Every time the input pin is rising from 0 to 1, the handler is immediately called. Using IRQ falling would create the same result because the time between two rising edges and two falling edges is the same. Now we can check how fast our Pico can measure. It works fine at 100 Hz and it works up to around 6 kHz, but here its values fluctuate a lot. Frequent viewers remember video number 345 where we did the same test with other processors and C++. To find out what happens, 
we can use a simple trick. We set a pin high as soon as the interrupt is triggered and display the signals on our oscilloscope. Green is the input signal and yellow the signal from the pin. We see that the reaction time of the PICO is between 55 and 60 microseconds. This variance is probably the reason for the fluctuating readings. For comparison, the ESP32 needed 3 microseconds for the same thing and the STM32 had 1.3 microseconds. We see MicroPython on the Pi Pico is not made for high-speed applications. It is 20 to 50 times slower than C++ in this respect. And now you belong to the 99% club. But everybody talks about the famous PIO function of the Pi Pico. So here is the challenge. Who can use the PIO to create a much, much faster counter? Anyway, we got all we need to use the two cores and do some fancy stuff. I can also assure you that if you start to play with MicroPython, you will love its ease of use and development speed. As you might know, for the Swiss, time is money. And now we come to the quirks. The first. MicroPython is very new on the Pico. This is why you always have to download the newest firmware from the homepage. For me, it was not enough to update the Raspberry Pi OS and download the firmware through Tony. Threads did not work. I had to use the version from the homepage. I assume this will change in the future. The second, not having a reset button on an MCU board is an interesting decision. One could say this is a beginner's mistake. Or the engineers thought that this product is perfect and does not need a reset button. Unfortunately, this is not true in my case. The two core scenarios needed lots of resets because the Pico did no more respond to the REPL commands, for example. Without the reset button, you have to unplug the micro USB connector every time the processor blocks. And we know that this is the Achilles heel of these connectors. I fear my Pico will not survive many such resets. So please, James, Liam or Luke, if you watch this video, please have mercy with us mere mortals. We screw it up from time to time and need a reset button. We also accept the 5 cents uplift needed for that. So what should we remember from this video? Already now we can use threads on both cores of the Pico. If needed, we can use global variables or locks for the synchronization of tasks. Because MicroPython is not RTOS, we have to stop at two threads. Also interrupts work. Currently they are much slower than in C++. The programming of the two core functionality is not finished yet. So always download the newest firmware. That's all for today. As always, you find the relevant links in the description. I hope this video was useful or at least interesting for you. If true, please consider supporting the channel to secure its future existence. Thank you. Bye.